I've been waiting to do this for a long time. I've been so lucky to be able to do streaming tutorials full time on this channel for years now, but the problem is that I kind of just do whichever one feels relevant. Like they're just kind of all over the place. A lot like me. You can't really find them all together in one easy place in the right order. Until now. Today, we're starting a series of short, easy to follow tutorials that we add to every month for free right here on YouTube. We'll start today with an OBS masterclass and then we'll add an audio masterclass and a camera masterclass and maybe even more. And we'll put them at the very top of this channel in a group called a streaming masterclass or streaming masterclasses. I haven't spent enough time deciding on that yet. So today we're gonna to start from the very beginning, which is a very good place to start. And by the end of this super short tutorial, you should be able to go live with your very first Twitch stream with a camera, two scenes for gameplay and just chatting, some alerts, and even music. Let's jump into it. Let's start with the ones who make this entire video possible and thank the sponsor owned.tv, which is super relevant to this video, actually. We'll have a whole dedicated video to alerts and overlays in the future in this series, but if you are looking to get started on aesthetic needs, making your stream look pretty, there's no better place to look than Owned.pro. Owned just added a whole new suite of free features to help you get started with your overlays and alerts with just a couple clicks. Things like if you find an overlay that fits your vibe but it's the wrong color, you can just change the color later. And even things like quickly finding images and widgets to add to your stream to make it completely unique to you. Owned.pro just gives you so many easy and free and cool customization tools that the other guys just don't really give you. So go check them out. I'll put a link to them in the top of the description and let's get started building your first stream. One of the first big questions people ask when they get started is, should I use OBS or should I use Streamlabs? And short answer in 2024, OBS. Streamlabs started as a way to help brand new streamers get started easier, especially back when OBS was a little bit more confusing and intimidating to look at, but nowadays, Things have changed quite a bit. Now Streamlabs has become more well known for hiding most of their features behind paywalls and actually using considerably more CPU power than regular OBS. And also with OBS, there's an endless list of really cool free plugins that you just can't use with Streamlabs because then they wouldn't be able to charge you for their stuff. I recommend OBS and so does everyone else that does what I do. So let's download OBS. We're gonna go to obsproject.com. We're gonna click on the operating system that we use and it starts downloading automatically. Easy peasy. And there's one last thing that's gonna pop up here before you can start building your scenes, and it's the auto configuration wizard. If you're just getting started, this is a great tool. Make sure it's set to optimize for streaming, hit next, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna check your PC's power and your internet connection and just kinda set up your basic settings for you so you don't have to worry about it. And you can connect your Twitch account here. I'm gonna connect to mine later. And now we're finally here. Let's get started. Let's make our first scene and let's start with the most important one. Start with the gameplay scene. There are a lot of streamers that only make a gameplay scene and that's all they use and that's fine. So we're first gonna name our scene by right clicking on it and going to rename or kinda call it gameplay scene. And then we're gonna add our very first source and we're gonna add our actual gameplay full screen source. We're gonna do that by going to Game Capture, which is right here. We'll go ahead and leave it the name Game Capture. We're gonna set this to capture any full screen application. That means that anytime I launch a game, it's automatically captured and put as the background of this. And just so you can see it, let's actually launch a game. I've got this little indie game called Bread and Fred. Makes me so happy. So you can see I've got my gameplay here and if I move it down, I can see it being captured in OBS. You probably also notice that it looks like I'm not capturing all of it in here. That's because my canvas here, what we're working with and what the stream sees is 1080p, but my gameplay, my monitor here is 4K. And so it doesn't fit. So we're gonna grab this little square here. We're gonna drag it in. We're gonna move it. And we're gonna get this to fit perfectly on our canvas. And you also may have noticed that mine snapped to the edges like that. If yours doesn't do that, or maybe it does and you don't want it to do that, all you have to do is go to your settings, make sure you're in general, and go to source alignment snapping and do whatever you want with that. There's also one other common way to capture your screen on a PC like this, and that's using display capture instead of game capture. What that's gonna do is that's gonna capture your entire display, we'll name it display capture here, 
Again, let's resize this to fit the canvas properly. And no matter what is on your screen, that's what's gonna show up in here. That way, if you wanted to do some more just chatting style content, maybe show some YouTube or anything in a browser, something that's not a game like this, it's gonna capture just whatever's on your monitor. The only downside of this is it does utilize a little bit more resources than game capture. So if you use this, but you're gaming and you notice you're dropping some frames, you might wanna to switch to game capture instead of display capture. I've got a pretty beefy PC, so I'm actually gonna leave this at display capture. Now let's add our webcam. We're gonna add another source. This time we're gonna choose video capture device and we're gonna name it webcam. Under device, we're gonna pick our Elgato Facecam Pro. It's what I'm using right now. You may have seen it appear here because I forgot to put it up there before we started. I'm gonna leave the rest as is. And again, you can see this is a 4K webcam, so it doesn't fit. You can just see my big old forehead in there. But let's make this extra small and we're gonna put it on the side of our gameplay over here. By the way, this video capture device is also what you'll use if you're capturing like a PlayStation or Xbox or Switch and you're going through a capture card, which I will have a video on in the future. But that's where those are all found. Another thing I'm not crazy about on this webcam right now is how much blank space I'm capturing, but I'm taking up so much of the canvas. So I'm going to hold Alt and then when I drag in from the side like I did before, instead of resizing, it's just going to crop. So I'm just gonna cut this down to only what I need. That may have been too much. <laughs> there we go. So now I can bring it back up a little bit larger in size, but I'm not gonna take up too much of the gameplay scene. And there we go. We have a completely solid gameplay scene. I know it's only two sources, but this is actually what a lot of people are using now. They've really shrunken down, minimalized their overlays and their scenes. But now that we have our gameplay scene, let's set up our chatting scene. So we're gonna add another scene here. We're gonna call it chatting and we're going to add that webcam back in but we're going to make it full screen so we're going to add a source we're going to go to video capture device this time we're going to add an existing source that we've already added to a different scene before it's webcam it's right there waiting for us let's resize it and i mean you know maybe we aim it a little bit better maybe i have it positioned better but my cable is too short and i didn't have time to find a longer one for this video so this is our just chatting scene. Something kind of cool that a lot of people don't know is that when you add a crop the way I did by holding alt and dragging and I added it onto the webcam here, it didn't save over to the webcam on this scene. When you crop the way I showed you, it only applies to that specific layer that you added it to on that specific scene. But if you want to add a crop that'll apply to all of your scenes, you can right click on it, go to filters, under effect filters, you can add a crop or a pad. And in there, let's add, I don't know, 300 pixel crop on the left, a 300 pixel crop on the right. And now that's actually going to apply to every single scene. Anytime you use this source now, it will have that same crop on us. So this is great for people who wanna have maybe a, an ongoing theme throughout all of their sources. You can have things shaped a specific way by using filters. The last thing we need to add to our stream is our microphone. So for this one, I'm gonna go to settings. I'm gonna to go to audio and I'm gonna to go to mic auxiliary over here and I'm gonna set this to my microphone. In this case, it is the beacon mic. So you can see I have two audio sources running right now. The first one is my desktop audio, which just captures anything coming from my computer like Spotify, my gameplay, YouTube, whatever. And then I have my microphone coming into it. We're gonna hit okay. And now you can see under mic, if I tap the microphone, it makes a sound. One of the mistakes I see a lot of people make is they plug in a webcam that has a microphone built into it, and then they also plug in a microphone and they don't realize they're getting audio from both of them. So if this were my webcam microphone instead of my actual microphone, what I would do is I would mute it, and then I would click on these three dots and I would hide it, and then it would just disappear. Now you will have to do that on every scene that the webcam is added to, but it's a great way to get rid of that. You can also add a microphone by going into sources and adding an audio input capture. But what that's gonna do is that's gonna add it to your scene as a source specific for that scene. By going into the settings and going into audio, what we're doing is we're adding global audio inputs. So by adding our microphone in here, it automatically applies to every scene. You can see it right here as well. So if you have a scene where you want a specific audio source, like maybe 
you're a really cool streamer and you have a scene where you're in another room or you're over on the other side of the room and you want a microphone to only show up during that scene, you would add it as a source and then it's only gonna show up there. Now we've got our first two scenes. And honestly, if you wanted a simple setup like a lot of people are using, you're pretty much ready to go live at this point. And you can switch back and forth between your scenes by clicking on the one that you want. A lot of streamers will switch back and forth between scenes by using something called an Elgato Stream Deck, which is a bunch of little buttons right in front of you. So that way, if you're in a game, you don't have to alt tab out of it and click on it with your mouse. But if you're not ready to buy a Stream Deck, you don't actually have to do that. You can also set scene changes to hotkeys on your keyboard. That's right in your settings over here under hotkeys and we'll go into that more in a future video, but it's not that hard to figure out. You should give it a shot. One of the main things we're still missing here is alerts, like an animation that pops up on the stream when someone follows or when someone donates. And that is gonna require a whole video on its own. So if you'd like to stick around for that, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And while you're down there, hit the like button and drop your favorite emoji in chat, which will let YouTube know that you like these videos with your sweet, sweet engagement. Thank you. Now let's just connect our Twitch account because I didn't do that earlier and then we're ready to go live. So we're gonna hit the settings button down here. We're gonna go to stream and then I'm just gonna hit connect account and I'm gonna sign in to my Twitch account right in OBS. This is not the way it was when I first started. It's gotten way easier. You used to have to find something called a stream key deep in your Twitch settings on the website. I'm so glad they got rid of that and integrated directly into OBS. Also, another great thing that comes from connecting your Twitch account to OBS is you can have things like your chat and your stream name directly attached to OBS. Again, video I'll be doing in the future on this series. And we're on to the last thing that you're gonna need for your stream. For a proper stream, you need proper music. You need good music, you need to be safe music. Stream Beats is a music service, it's my music service actually, but it has thousands of tracks all available for free on Spotify and Apple Music and well, actually on all the things. And we just added another eight to nine hours of music to the day this video came out, today. I'll link to it down below. In the four years since we launched Stream Beats, not a single streamer has gotten a DMCA strike. But you should be aware that Twitch's audio recognition software is very imperfect. So if you go back to try to rewatch some of your streams later, that's called a VOD, you'll notice that some sections are probably gonna be muted and that is a misrecognition done on Twitch's part and it happens. There's only one way to avoid that and that's by setting up your music so that it doesn't show up in your VOD, it's only in your live stream. And that will also be a tutorial in the future in this masterclass. If you play Stream Eats or any other safe music through Spotify or Apple Music just directly on your desktop, it will show up right in the audio mixer under desktop audio. That's where it'll be. And congrats. Your very first stream is set up, ready to go, everything you need. You should congratulate yourself by getting yourself a really good mouse pad over at reallygoodmousepads.com. Did I really advertise two of my own products at the end of this video? Maybe that's a part of the masterclass. Maybe it's the business and about diversifying your income so you're not relying on Twitch. Or maybe I'm just a shill for myself. I don't know. Argue about it in the comments. And I'll see you in the next video. Happy streaming.